Yeah. Um, hello, everybody. Um, welcome to uh, tonight's um, monthly meeting. Uh, my name is Alan Montague. I'm the VP of Programs here at ASTD Golden Gate. Uh, I see a number of um, new faces, a number of work is uh, a number of familiar faces. Um, uh, welcome you all to this uh, our second event in our summer of e-learning. So we have uh, Dave Ashheim and the and the crew from Train Myself here to talk about how you implement mobile learning in your organisation. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that, we're, that I'm, I'm so looking forward to hearing about. And I'll, I'll come back to talk about Dave in just a moment. A few other things I want to mention before I start. Uh, this is the second part, the, the second step in our summer of e-learning. We have, uh, I'm so pleased to be able to say this, we have Tom Coleman from Articulate uh, coming to San Francisco in just over a month. Uh, we've still got some spaces left for his two workshops. Uh, the first workshop is how to become a rapidly learning pro. So how you can use the tool set, and it is tool, uh, tool agnostic for that. Um, and the second one is um, the, oh, getting started with Articulate Storyline. For those of you who don't know, Tom Coleman is the VP of Community for Articulate, who are producers of Storyline and of um, the, the Studio series. Um, and then following one, we've got uh, e-learning Joe, Joe Gansey from Cam coming back. Uh, he was one of our panelists for anyone who was at the panel discussion we had last month. Uh, he will be coming back and doing a one-day introduction on getting started with uh, Adobe Captivate, which bear in mind, Captivate 7 was released about a week, a couple of weeks ago. Um, there's some interesting new bits in there. Uh, so, so Joe will be uh, giving us a, a quick view of how to get going and started with that. There it is. Um, we also have uh, a couple of gig events coming up. So the South Bay uh, had um, uh, a, an event on uh, gamification coming up in, uh, I think it's the 26th of, it was on the, it was on the slide, yeah, it was running, um, but it was on, it was on the 26th of July. Um, and uh, I think the I don't know if the North Bay gig's got anything currently planned, but if you go to asdgoldengate.org, our entire program of events is out there. <laughs> um, I'd like to introduce a few members of the board who are here. In fact, if I can ask those members of the board who are here to, to also stand up. Um, so we have P. Wen and Bruce. Uh, P. Wen's our VP of, uh, Marketing Communica of Communications and Technology, um, and Bruce is our VP of Membership. So those of you who aren't, but I could see a show of hands. Who who isn't a member here? Member of this chapter. Member of the chapter. Okay. Yeah. We're Mount Diablo members. Well, welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so uh, anyone who isn't a member, go see Bruce. Find out. He'll tell you all the great reasons why you should be a member of our chapter. Um, and the um, yeah, why you should be a member of our chapter. Not least the fact, the fact that there's over $130 worth of discounts still to be had uh, over the next, uh, just, just in the summer of your learning alone, by being a member. And that's, that's pretty incredible. Um, do, do any of you, either of you have any announcements for us? Yes, the 3D Learning SIG. I'm also part of the 3D Learning SIG. Um, it's a place where we go into a program called Second Life. You, you get an avatar. Second Life is a free download to you. Um, we meet every third Monday. Right now we're working on a training that you will be able to leave Second Life with. Use it in Second Life or use it in your real life uh, trainings on, <coughs> yes, what's it on? <laughs> <laughs> I just threw a total blank. What was the board meeting about? The one that we had a retreat on? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So we just went out to... <laughs> yeah, no, um, we, we talked about um, how to actually use those. So we, so the tool, the, the idea we're working with is to have the tool to create the training on how to train in that environment. No, but the, uh, not, not that part. <laughs> I'm slept in, I guess I've slept I in. just drew total blank. <laughs> we did a whole thing. The first part of our meeting was on the book that we wrote. Oh, the uh, disruptions. Okay, so what we're doing is, I'm sorry, folks. I just had a brain lapse. 
We're going to be discussing and working on a training. So a PowerPoint will be developed. People will be adding things that you can do PowerPoints and put them in Second Life on how to teach people how to deal with dysfunctions in a team, the, the storming, norming, and all that. So we encourage people to come join us because we're going to be working on this starting next Monday night, the 15th, I believe. So if you have any questions, once again, like Alan said, go to the website, click on Second Life, download it. Carla Kincaid Yoshikawa, she's the team lead. She and or I just email either one of us. Our email addresses are there. We will meet you in Second Life. We'll teach you how to walk forwards, backwards, sideways, and how to fly. And uh, no, we will teach you how to fly. You get the other key. And um, you'll have a very good time. It's, it's quite innovative, and it's a new way that people are looking at things. Thank you. Thank you very much. And do it. Um, hi everybody, um, just wanted to let everyone know that we have four, uh, five people joining us online, actually we have a Sunnel cast here, so everything will be recorded, and Alan is looking handsome up here. <laughs> um, so, joking aside, for um, how, many of you, how many of you are on our LinkedIn group? The ASTD LinkedIn group. If you're not, um, I encourage you to join because we, we have more than 300 members now. What it means is then you can increase your network. And also, if you have any questions or you know have ideas or discussions, just post them there. And uh, we do have people who jump in and answer questions. It's not um, just about uh, promoting our chapter events. So. Um, I encourage you to join us and uh, also participate online as well as offline in, in person. And if you have, you know, our dream is for us to continue the conversations from the classroom to LinkedIn and maybe eventually you will have an in-person meeting or coffee somewhere. So that's our dream and I hope you can help us achieve that. If you are tweeting, that's our hashtag ASTVGG. Um, and our handle is at ASTD Golden Gate. So if you have a Twitter account, you can follow us. Um, and if you want to tweet, feel free to tweet throughout the evening. Thank you. Is anybody uh, a tweeter? Am I there? Oh, excellent. Because I, 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 so I tweet heavily during these things. And what I tend to do is actually storify what I've tweeted oh. and storify the hashtag and yeah. just pull it all together and just publish it on the, actually, I publish it, I put it out, I make a, a link to it on the, in the LinkedIn site so that we can all continue the discussion, continue the learning as we go along. So, uh, on, on to tonight's presentation. I'm so pleased to be able to um, have Dave Ashheim here. Dave's been doing mobile learning since before anybody considered the term mobile learning. Um, was it 12 years? Eight. Think back to eight years ago. How big was your mobile phone? And what did you do? Yeah. Or not do? Yeah. And Dave was, I, I first saw Train by Cell, I think maybe four, year, four or five years ago, at an ASTD event. And, and they, they, they had a, um, it, it was a text based mm -hmm. uh, learning support. I thought, my God, that's really impressive. Um, didn't have a chance to use it, but I thought, God, that would be handy. And then, as the technology's evolved, um, he, him and his group have done more and more bringing technology to the workplace. So I'm very pleased to uh, uh, be able to introduce you to Dave Ashheim and the group from Train by Cell on how to implement M-Learning in your organization. Thank you. Just in time. Just in time. <laughs> Perfect. 
Okay, my name's Dave Ashheim, and I'm with uh, four colleagues. We have Megan, who does all of our client services and all of our training of training. And we have Jason, who does uh, kind of U.S. Uh, sales and client service. Bhutan does U.S. and Europe. She spent quite a bit of time with the partner we have in Germany. So we have a lot of clients now internationally. And Jim just joined us a month or two ago, has an instructional design background. So um, Jim is kind of on the helping this stuff succeed. And our format today is going to be very hands-on, so you need to have your cell phone handy. And it's okay if it rings, kind of like that. Uh, turn the ringer on, if you want to take a call, that's fine. You can text away, don't even have to pretend that you're checking the scores. Um, and uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to talk just a little bit about kind of how we came to mobile, and then Jim is going to talk a little bit about an article that is uh, kind of helps summarize where this industry is going. And then we're going to break into four groups, led by these four team leaders. And they have an outline of some things to kind of think about. And then you're going to create a little mobile experience with their help using our platform. And then somebody will come up here, either a member of you folks or one of our team members, and have everybody in the audience text in and experience what it is that you just created. So the idea is to show you that it is possible to use mobile and it does have some practical uh, applications. So that's the idea. Probably will take an hour or so to do this. So we'll probably be out by, at least our part of the office. So um, I started a company called Guide by Cell about eight years ago. And Guide by Cell was designed to provide learning and education to museum visitors. So if you go to any zoo, park, garden in the world, um, many of them are using our technology, SF MoMA and Cal Academy and Art Central, Park. Central Park, yeah, they have a great cell phone tour. So that's how we started eight years ago. And it was all about learning, and it was just something that I love for people, so that's why I started it. And then five years ago, I got a call from a uh, head of training at Booz Allen. Are you aware of Booz Allen? Mm -hmm. We've been introduced recently for some other <laughs> small smoking issues, but we won't bring that up. And uh, so the head of training called and said, I just saw you at the Smithsonian. What are you doing in the world of training? I said, uh, I have no idea how, how we could ever use a phone for training. And she says, what about onboarding? I said, I don't even know what that word means. <laughs> and she said, well, I'll be glad to teach you. And I said, well, not at $500 an hour. I'll give you our software to use, but that's what we're going to do. So that was the first time we ever thought about using mobile really in a training and a learning environment that was five years ago. And we've attended all the ASTD and the Sherman conference and all that, and we would get thousands of people up to our booth saying, this is great, we're going to do something. Not now. We're going to do something. <laughs> so I think in the first couple of years, um, we might have had three or four clients. It was just <laughs> over the top because we didn't have smartphones. Mm -hmm. Texting was kind of expensive, and I wasn't sure how to do, you know, these younger kids I was making somebody under 35 could do it. <laughs> but Jason, I'm not sure where you fit in that. So uh, that was, it was slow going. And then smartphones came out, and then the world kind of went towards apps. We'll talk about apps in just a moment. And that started to get people thinking about apps. And then all of a sudden, in the last, I would say, 12 months, the floodgate has opened for us. We're a 20-person company, so we're not a huge company. But we now have people calling us, which is a miracle from three years ago. We wouldn't have to make huge presentations and fly somewhere, talk to everybody about this idea. So it's been a big sea change. Um, and we offer three core services. With mobile, basically, we're talking about you could dial a phone number and listen to something. <laughs> you could text, or now you can use a mobile website or an app. So those are the three basic things that people are doing with their phone. Dialing a number, texting, or going to an app or a mobile website. Okay. 
not understanding the technology or why you use it. Yeah, resistance by other other members or senior management. Mm -hmm. Okay. Security. Security, that's a great one. Mm -hmm. That one never comes up in the beginning, and then all of a sudden somebody says, oh my gosh, what about IT is going to hate this idea. Yes. Security, okay. A uh, lack of devices on the work. That's lack a of good work point. related devices, so I have to use my personal device. Yeah, personal and device. Sort of with that mirror image of release, work time versus personal time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what there's different payment issues with retailers. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. an issue. That's a good one. Okay, how about some more? There's, there's got to be some more. Doug, anything that comes to mind? Well, I would think that, <coughs> excuse me, I would think that some of the vendors that are currently providing training solutions haven't ported over to the mobile device as well. Right. No integration. Where do I start? That's, that can be a real a real hard thing. Because I've got this great LMS system, and they don't have a mobile thing, and how do I get my data in? And okay. I've got, yeah, large organizations can have literally tens of thousands of hours of development invested in something that's going to be, that they've already built. So yeah. they've, you know, um, and you can't <laughs> just take something that's built for a, it well, doesn't well, port well. well. Work. Right. So the integration is one, and then the portability is not so good. Fear good. of the portability, fear of the sky drive, fear of the cloud. The cloud, okay. Not trusting the cloud. You, you're not trustworthy of the cloud, are you? <laughs> how about some more? All right, how about from some of our team members? Uta, Jim, what are some of the other things that you hear about? It's too expensive. Too expensive. I don't even know how much it costs, but I know yeah. it's going to be expensive. And we don't have a budget for it. <laughs> well, I haven't even thought about a mobile strategy yet. Yeah, that's right. Well, I, I, where do I begin? Mobile strategy? No. Okay. So my mobile strategy. And we had a, we, we, we've had lots of fads before. What's right. Is this a fad yeah. or what am I going to do? Yeah. Traditional IT thinking. IT thinking. Yeah, our, uh, typically if IT gets involved, add six months. <laughs> <laughs> we try to do this under the IT radar. <laughs> no, you don't need IT. Please don't call it up. <laughs> Traditional um, structural design methods may or may not be applicable. That's a great one. That's why you know, Jim is joining us because it's totally different. Yeah. Traditional structural design, exactly. That's in, uh, instructional design. Okay. Got it. Okay. What's about Uta? For web based solutions like ours, the, inter uh, the connectivity. It's great. In America is good, but in some other countries may not be the case. Uta so spent six months in Germany thinking Germans are going to be cutting edge. Mm -hmm. They were very resistant, much more resistant than the United States. And the they still have to pay for connectivity in That's trains right, yeah, and airports. And, you know, so it's a cost yeah. issue again. Yeah, so um, mm -hmm. connectivity. Mm -hmm. Any more? Okay, I think we've got uh, the biggest ones. Okay, so um, let's not do uses. We'll do that next. But what about what are the what are the pros? Why are you folks interested in this? What are the things that you think might be beneficial? Just in time. Just in time. Okay. Just in time. You have a bigger whiteboard. Bigger whiteboard. No, we'll keep it to one. But that's okay. What What else? Bigger audience. A much bigger audience, okay. Relevance. Yeah, the relevance that it, that you could scan a QR code, get information about something, and it's it's just right there. More Not social. just in time, but always relevant. with me. Okay, it's always with me. Right. Social. Yeah, it's in a funny how it's turned from anti-social. It was so anti-social. You know, to have your phone out at a dinner table or even walking around a mall was rude. Now it's a social behavior to have your phones out at dinner. <coughs> what else? Increases applied learning. Increases learning, okay. <coughs> David, in your new 
job, what what can you imagine that this could do from what you're doing? Well, for us, we're doing a startup that's platform based. Yeah. And we definitely want the platform to be mobile because it'll give people more ways to access the information. And I think we've hit on that quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. And it'll just extend it out. Yeah. And okay. more opportunities when you're commuting to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's there for you. Yeah. 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 Increase access. Yeah. Here. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Easier to maintain. Easier to maintain. Yeah. I think you're right. You can also measure progress. That is a key one. That because it's in the cloud, every single thing is measured. So with our system, we know time of day. We know we know what time Chris logged on and what pages uh, she looked at. Whether she looked at a video, how many seconds she looked at that video and how she answered these questions. We know all that about, uh, the, the clients know all that about every single thing because it's in the cloud. If it's designed properly, it can uh, match the speed of the learner. Right, that's a good one. Yeah, I was gonna say more targeted and focused yeah. on the goal, or the learning. Mm -hmm. Concise. I don't have to waste all day. What else? Jim or Jason, what else are you hearing? Think back on people that are using this. What are you saying? Yes, to I think David's point is platform agnostic. Right. Um, we currently work on over 350 devices. And the, and the cell phone now is your computer, obviously. It's taking everybody a little while to think about that. Mm -hmm. But lap, it's, it's going from desktop to laptop to to cell phone, and then now up into Kindles and tablets and everything. What else, Jim? Anything else you can think of, or Ruta? Many people, they know that the younger generation is so um, so into their mobile devices, whether it's smartphones or tablets, that they know it's coming. And they know mobile is the future. They just don't know. They, they're afraid of it, but they also know they can't ignore it. So that's, that's a pro in a sense. It is something you have to deal with, at least information-wise. Yeah. Portability. Pardon? Portability. Portability, that's a good one. Tablets are replacing even desktop computers. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, well the price is coming down. That's how they're consuming content. Oh, gosh, yeah. Whether you're reading books or studying or whatever you're doing, it's yeah. tablet based. Yeah. So I was going to ask the question to you with both of your comments. Are you using smartphones and tablets interchangeably when you talk about mobile devices, or are you segmenting those? Uh, out? We think of them as the same. Thing. You do. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's right. That's right. So we right. think of mobile as 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 any. What are you carrying? That's right. right. Okay. Now that's going to you know we're not going to be able to keep on saying that because with Google Glasses and with wristbands and with uh -huh. mobile being stretched to being something that's implanted and can tell you your blood sugar. That's not going to always be the case, but right now, in our very simplistic way of thinking about mobile, it's tablets and so stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Or even really, I mean, what's the difference between a laptop that has a uh, Wi-Fi card in it or a huge, a huge tablet or the new Samsung phone? It's just the size. Mm -hmm. They're all still mobile. Okay, so now, Megan, why don't you go over to that board? Um, we're finding three, uh, uh, people are using mobile for three main things, and then we'll brainstorm about what some of these things are, and then in a few minutes we'll break into groups. So it's being, uh, the number one thing is it's being, a, it's a place to store content. <coughs> so who said just in time? Somebody here said just in time. So it's the storage of content. I need to access that diagram, that plan, that schedule, that video, that whatever. One of our first pilots was with Coldwell Banker, and that guy at Coldwell Banker says, I have roomfuls of videos. If I can just get them on a, the cloud that maybe my broker should look at when they're sitting there in an open house and nobody's there and they could go through and peruse it, that's what they would like to do. So, so store content. Uh, the second thing is, is to use it as kind of a communication vehicle. Texting, which we're going to use in just a second, I think is going to be something that every single one of you will use in your corporation. At the moment, it's a big mystery. 
how do I set up texting? Do I have to do it from my own phone? And who do I who do I use it? Who, who do I go to for it? But when that mystery is kind of solved, you will see a thousand applications for texting as a communication vehicle. So email and texting, getting alerts out. Jason has a client uh, in Ohio, BMW Finance. They came to us after seeing us present, and their first big solution was weather alerts. Weather alerts. Oh. This is the head of training said we're going to start with weather alerts. <laughs> So Jason and I are thinking, <laughs> you know, yes. I, it's unbelievable that that was, but, but it was a major problem for them because the training department managed the communication and when there were weather issues, they would get calls all day, all night long, is the factory open, not open, what's the schedule, what do I do, et cetera. So weather alerts, which is not really training and learning, turned out to be the first thing that they wanted to do. So communication. And then the third thing is, we call it engaging. Testing, engaging, quizzes, compliance. Touching somebody, have them do something, fill out a form, take a test, um, any kind of basic interaction. And we found that if you, in, if you add a little interaction, text back your answer, fill out this online form, watch this video and answer these four questions, Instead of a burden, which we thought it would be a burden, people will do a ten times, well, they'll participate ten times more if there's a little, if there's a, if there's a chance to interact at the end. I'm sure some psychologists can answer why that, why that is, but that's the results that we've seen. So if you have content, and then you have a way afterwards where people could show how much they know or take a, quest, a quiz or a poll or a survey or something or tell me what you thought, comment like you would com could comment on a YouTube video, people's response increases by five to ten times. So engaging and uh, quizzing and testing and all of that stuff. Okay, so let me go through a few more slides and then we're going to break into um, okay, Megan, I might meet you in a second, so. Okay, so how we started, five years ago, the negatives were, these, these were so, so strong, it was really, really challenging. If you would have gone to your supervisors and your team and said, I want to do a mobile strategy, only someone with a, that could handle a lot of uh, arrows in their back and get that approved. <laughs> and they would say, well, not everybody has a cell phone, it's so expensive, and who's going to set it up, and I don't have time to do it, and we don't have a smartphone, etc. And the social acceptability, you know, just in three or four years, phones have gone from, it's really rude that you took your phone out, to it's just common media. Um, so these negatives have gone away. Let me just talk a little bit about apps versus mobile, and then we'll turn it over to Jim. How many of you know the difference between an app and a mobile website? Alan. Oh, you want to ask you to tell you? Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, you just, you just held up your hand. So I, I, would, say, I would say that uh, an app is something that you have to download and install on the device, right. uh, which typically means it's, it will connect and maybe it might get its information or data or something, but it's, you have to do something in advance to get it. That's Whereas true. a mobile website is just a website um, that is really designed to be useful on a mobile yeah. screen. How many apps does the average smartphone owner touch in a week? Who wants to guess? 30. 30. 18. 18. 18. 25. 25. 25. 3. Is the average? Oh, I love how average. Now you know you folks obviously are the cutting edge of San Francisco, but the average number of apps that you use on a regular basis that people, smartphone users, are using, and that's down from about seven, and that's because people are going to mobile websites. Jason, that include Angry Birds. That's probably. Uh, that's the one. <laughs> so, um, which so what is really winning these days? Apps or mobile websites? Who 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 believes apps are on the way up? 
Okay, three or four. And the rest of you, mobile websites? Can you give me an example of a mobile website? I'm just <laughs> yeah, if you typed in your browser, www. your uh, your your own um, your own website. If it shows up on your phone, whether it's formatted correctly, that's a mobile website. Now, when you reformat it so that it loads fast, then um, you will see a true mobile website. So, in fact, let's just let's just okay, okay, so like retail, you know, ESPN.com, Target.com, Bart, Bart, actually Bart, yeah. right? So, so I can um, type in Bart on my web browser right now. So let's do this. So everybody, go to Google or someplace and type in Brookfield Zoo. Why did you pick Brookfield Zoo? Chicago. <laughs> Um, because they use our oh. mobile website. They have a really complicated flash based million drop downs, but they used our platform to make it load fast and really skinny. So if you type in Brookfield Zoo, it goes to the Brookfield Zoo old, uh, regular computer site, and then in a second or two, it will redirect you to a menu based. So this is a good, good thing for all of you to do because your question is a really good one. What oh. is a mobile website? Well, this is formatted to Exactly. So it's been automatically changed, automatically, automatically formatted. Without so me downloading the mobile. That's right. Ah, okay. So because I don't have to download something, and two, not how many different, all right, so if, um, David, David's going to know the answer to this. David, what are the three operating systems, main operating systems an engineering firm would have to Build for to have apps to cover all devices. iPhone. So iPhone, they call it iOS. So if you want to write down iOS, you can impress all of your friends. That's an iPhone operating system. Okay, what's the other one? Android. Android. Android is owned by and managed by Google. 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 Okay. And last but not least, Windows. Windows. Well, I guess we'll put Windows. <laughs> so, if you wanted to have your website um, mobile friendly and you wanted to use an app, you would have to tell your developers or go hire somebody to at least do these two. And in corporate America, a lot of Blackberries. Well, at a, at a minimum, it's 10K, 10K a shot just to talk to any software company <coughs> stuff. So you've got thirty thousand dollars racked up before you start. And then that person has to go download that. And if I ask you all to go to the Brookfield Zoo and download the Brookfield Zoo app, no you're gonna want to download the Brookfield Zoo app. No. Most people don't want to do that. So for that reason, apps are losing out if there's such a thing as a battle for against mobile websites, just because it's so much easier to go to Brookfield Zoo and it turns it into what looks like an app. There must be cost involved in translating your website into an app, into what looks like an app, though. So it must not be a zero. The comparison, there must be some cost to doing what Brookfield sure. did with their website as well. Yeah. Right. Now, um, what they did was they looked around and they, they hired us to use our tool, and then we give them the, the tool to do it themselves. So they definitely pay us to do that, but then it's available on any mobile platform anywhere in the world. So that's that agnostic piece. Yeah. And you know, if you look, if you look at a lot of the um, um, simple website builders out there, mm -hmm. so if you like GoDaddy, mm -hmm. I my 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 company website I built on GoDaddy. Mm -hmm. There's a mobile version of it. Yeah. So you just prep, and it will Convert reformat it. the day. You know, change the the menu structure to the basic mm -hmm. menu, to a to a bigger mm -hmm. menu. I just yeah. give you that to, to play with. That's right. What percent of website hits these days do experts say are coming from a mobile device? Mm. Now, there's a huge variety of these numbers, but I'll tell you the one that I've been hearing. About 50 percent. 50, you say 50? 66 at least. 66 percent. I can start from that, 80. 80 percent? A lot of people that think almost high. It's about 33 percent. Remember when we live in the Bay Area. 
Yeah. Yeah. So we have two people in the world. Yeah. In Huntsville, it's yeah. exactly. 18. Yeah. <laughs> What's the age group? Yeah. It's probably so some of the age group. Yeah, yeah. yeah, probably. Now, the age group used to be a much bigger thing, but as the older folks have gotten smartphones for either business or because they want to communicate with the rest of the family who is mm -hmm. on smartphones, uh, that is changing quite a bit. Right. Uh, so, it, so if you folks don't have a mobile website, forget the whole training part. If you don't have a mobile website, you should definitely talk to your IT people or whatever to realize that one third of your hits are coming, are being delivered on a site that probably is pretty hard to navigate. And in some cases, that's not a big deal. But in other cases, like the Brookfield Zoo, it's pretty good. Yeah. <coughs> oh, okay. All right. Uh, so that's apps versus mobile. Um, we've talked about this. <coughs> Jen's got about three or four slides to talk about, and then we're going to break into groups. You're up. Okay. I won't take too much time, so we can go ahead and get hands on with the groups. Um, the reason I refer to this is because I was looking at some information, some articles, and I've looked at books by Ruth Colvin Clark, and I know that some key principles, like these principles from multimedia, that as they apply to e-learning and maybe some other learning environments, they can also be adapted and applied to a mobile environment. In particular, uh, managing the cognitive load. And I think the mobile environment and the platform that we have, or any mobile environment, lends itself really well to managing the cognitive load because you can piece things out in manageable chunks. So you're not, you know, if it's designed well, of course, from a instructional design perspective, or, you know, as all of you are training and learning professionals, uh, you know that good design makes a big difference. And if you can manage things in a way that people don't feel overwhelmed, then they're going to become more engaged rather than disengage and shut down. And so man managing the cognitive load is one thing that I wanted to tie in to all the great things that Dave was talking about as a, as a really good benefit of using mobile technology. Don't you think there's too many new bullets on that managing the load page? <laughs> I tried to keep it to three, three bullet points, and, and, only, and only two colors. And the same font. Right. Yep. I didn't want a million things going on. Exactly. Good observation. Um, so. Uh, another key thing about managing the cognitive load and engaging people is that. Um, you have task-based objectives that come into play here really well. Uh, if, you are having, if you have people out in the field who have to do some safety and compliance training, you can bring them through a text to a content page. Uh, without having too much information on the content page, you can have just a little bit of instructions, a video, and then a button that makes it interactive where they go to a quiz that's on a separate page, not on the same, so it's not an overload. And, um, and it's good because you can really get into specific tasks that they have to do if they're out in the field doing whatever it is, welding or, or anything else. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the good things about it is that you can really apply the SMART approach to defining what your task-based objectives are when considering how you're putting things into context so that people are immersed. And, and a rough analogy is, you go to school and you learn Spanish and you study it for four years and you go and you're living in the States and you're, you know, you're doing all these different levels and you're reading the book and you have whatever stuff that goes on. But when you're in Spain and you're immersed and you're in the context, you're obviously immersed and you're using it and it makes a little bit more of a difference. So reaching people out in the field, you, have, you can have people in the house, out in the field, people at top level. You can get everyone connected real time, and in terms of training and learning, you can make things short and sweet and have them very concise in terms of the cognitive load, like I said, and also task-based objectives from an instructional design and training perspective. Well, Jim, you're saying can. It seems to me maybe the verb is must. I mean, isn't there in this, it seems to me in this environment, the kind of learning that you'd be doing, you really would have to keep it very short very targeted, very... Exactly. Is that, is that true? Yeah, because if you have a traditional classroom setting and then some other e-learning 
typically that's going to take a little bit longer. It's going to be a different type of setting where you're going into competencies versus task objectives. And so when you're dealing with task objectives, you really have to keep it short and sweet and manage the cognitive load. So that's the connection. I'm connecting those two dots and tying it in to the benefits of the mobile technology platform that Dave talked about. Is there another question? So as a concept, in a traditional design based on competencies, and I got you know 10 skill sets, mm -hmm. or, and then that maybe embedded tasks to there's these shorter, my concept of mobile is everything shorter, smaller right. bite, and then but more. So, you know, it might take me 10 one hour, 30 minute pieces rather than, you know, a four hour course. Yeah. Is that the design? I just want to get the design concept. Up. Well, from a design perspective, it's really going to be based on your needs analysis and how you're defining your objectives mm -hmm. for your audience. So, we give you the platform to customize things how you want to. And so following whatever model that you want, the Addy model or whatever design approaches that you use, um, you can break things into chunks that are best fit for your audience because of the nature of the content. So you have, you have a platform to go to work and design whatever it is is going to be most effective. For conceptually. So you, yeah, so you, can, take, you can take competencies and then break them into pieces to answer your question directly. And you can do that very easily because you can create a category that is just assessments or just a, a category with a bunch of different content pages. And you can break it apart or organize it however you want to. So I, I always consider the challenge with you know, the, the greatest advantage of mobile is the fact you've always got it with you and you can do stuff in small chunks. Right. And that's also, I think, one of the biggest challenges of it is, it is, is there, is, there are some things that take more than five minutes to teach or to learn. It's true, um, and and so ha that it's that it's that balance that I that I find is the is the biggest challenge. I, I find that as well uh, when I have my instruction design. Yes, yeah. And and I think what, what's good is you really have to think about, you know, if it's if it you can still do a lot of content on this platform and break things apart and chunk it well with good design. But uh, are you going to present information that is going to take a half an hour video along with about 10 PowerPoints teaching the content for the first time? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Yeah. However, you can do a lot of supplemental reinforcement, which often is required to burn things into long-term memory cognitively. People need that reinforcement the first time through. Well, on Bloom's taxonomy, maybe the first time through, you're lucky if you remember it, but when you start getting into a situation where it's embedded into context and it's task-based, then you start to apply, and when you apply, you remember so what you're doing. So we're, we're, we're in a world now where when people want to know how to do something, they'll Google it. Yeah. Yeah. And so what we, I, I, think, uh, I think our role as workplace learning and performance professionals is to give them a, a clean alternative to Googling it that's actually thought through and will present that data to them, what they need, when they need, and the, where they go. Exactly. And in our groups, this is a good segue to go into our groups, we're going to show you some really good examples of uh, how we do an organization of a mobile web page and um, content pages and then assessment pages and the whole back end for the analytics and reporting so you can track things by user and, and so on. But, but clean, clean and polished is, is part of good design, of course, yeah. Because if you Google something with a mobile device, you're still looking at a lexicon through a keyhole. You know, that's the problem. You have so much information. You Google something right. with a mobile device, you see it all, and you look through a keyhole, and yeah. you can't find what keyhole you need. To look through. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. with this, you have structure. It's, it's a flat structure. It's easy. It's simple. It's but simple. It's user-friendly. Targeted information, the, one, the information that you, as the administrator, want your learners to see. Okay, how do we want to break up into groups? So, why um, first? Thank you for your time. I would have you. Thank you. Uh, do a little interactive and simply text in so yeah. we can get everyone into the, the mobile, if you will. Yeah. All right, everybody. So, you're all texters. Ooh, so, you're going to send a text message. And those of you at home, <laughs> do this too. Text. The short code is 56512. 
and you're going to text in the word ASTD. So ASTD goes in your message part, and in your to part, where normally you would communicate with your friend or your spouse or something, you type in 56512. And when you send it off, you should get something back. <laughs> and who got something back first? <laughs> what you get? What does it say? Thank you for engaging in our mobile learning session. Oh. Please feel free to ask any questions that you may have throughout this time. You get this pencil. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a red magic marker with these seconds. <laughs> so did everybody get that text? If not, we have yeah. to work on it. Yes. Anybody that didn't get it, what's the message? Uh, it's ASTD is what you put in your message and send it to 56512. Well, since I'm suffering from T-Mobile, I'm not getting anything. So you didn't get anything. No, I'm suffering from T-Mobile. So you need a new carrier. Yes. You did not get anything. All right, Megan, can you help this nice lady? Okay, so you guys all got it? Row two, strong row two here. Row three, everybody got it. Okay, and what you did was, so you texted in, and you just signed up to get text messages from this course, this organization, this whatever, and um, We'll just show you how that works, and then we'll break into our groups. So let's just show you. Let's see. So by sending that in, you have signed up to get a text message, and we will just send this now. So some of you, <laughs> you should get a text. Did anybody just get a text? No. Nope. Nope. Oh, yes. Yep. yes. You did? What did you get? What does it say? It's easy to send a text to your link to your group. And then you can click that link. So go ahead and click that link. Okay. And you'll go to... Oh, somebody's phone is droiding. I'm droiding. <laughs> so then welcome. you click that link and you go to a mobile website. Welcome to All right. And with that, let's break into okay. it. Okay. Okay, so we have four groups, and you're physically actually going to have to get up and move. I know that's bad. It's bad design. And uh, Jason, so, so you can con so you can congregate around Jason, who is going to talk a little bit about training of salespeople. That's Jason. That's me. Who's doing HR new hiring? That's me. Uta's group. And Uta, you might want to go over where yeah. I was sitting or something. Yeah. He's going to talk about HR issues, new hires, onboarding. Assessment training is Jim. So if you want to be with assessment and training and, and quizzes and that kind of thing. And then storage of content and training, classical training, is Megan in the back. So just pull up the Okay, everybody. Yeah. Go to the home page. Let's go in here. Megan, yeah. your team is ready. We are good to go. Okay. That's good. You ready? All right. So, what are the things? No, there's a small group. They must be. Hey, it's quarter ready. I think I'm 
you have the answer. Yeah. One, two, three. Okay, you say all the people who have the back row. It did that, but it didn't Okay, so let's start with Jim. We only have maybe, let's try to wrap this up in 10 minutes. Jim, why don't you come on up and uh, tell people, tell the audience, if you want us to do a little demo, fine, or tell us what your, your findings were, pro and con about all this. So why don't you stand up and Uta, you'll be next after Jim. Sure. So we, um, we, we looked at assessments and we looked at um, doing a um, couple of different types of quizzes. One that is uh, like a first level quiz where there's some information attached uh, or a quiz that's set up and mapped to a content page where the person goes to a content page and reviews some information, hits a button and takes a quiz. Then sends a form in and utilizing the back end then the person in charge, the subject matter expert or the other person who is requesting the training director who is requesting that uh, X number of employees on the fourth floor complete uh, the content pages one, two, and three and quizzes one, two, and three by the end of the week. Uh, the person who is in charge of looking at the subject matter, the subject matter expert, and then also the, the, the boss of the department, for example, we look at who has complied and we go into the back end and run reports using the reports function to see that everyone has submitted the form and also look at their quizzes. And then we utilize the text feature to set out a text to the entire group on a scheduled time to get the second level quiz that is hidden. It's not visible to the user, but it is when you're using the back end and you're building out the page. And so there are a couple different types of assessments you can use, really a lot of different types of assessments you can use. And one of the key things that I wanted to point out is that you can have some where the user gets information right away and then you have another that maybe goes deeper and you don't want them to see the answers and you don't want them to go to that quiz until you're satisfied with the results from the first level. And then Alan brought up some interesting points. Yeah, so one of the things I was kind of trying to do when I'm building e-learning is, is, is come up with a test first concept because I find it doesn't piss people off so much. Um, so you, know, you, you test, you, you present the question, if they get the question right, then you just, uh, they, you give them the, ability, the, the option to skip the content because they, you know, they went to the answer, or to review it for some detail. And if they get it wrong, of course, you know, I was kind of hoping to see this, the, the, this, this tool would allow that, and it, and it is. Um, I think especially, especially with very small chunks of uh, when you're chunking data up quite quite small um, I think that that kind of lends itself very much to if I don't already know the answer I'm not coming if I, if I, if I don't know the answer that's the reason I'm coming here uh, if we consider this as a almost with performance support rather than training mm -hmm. um, yes. and I, I think that's a, yeah. Yeah. to me that's one of the, that's one of the biggest yeah. Um, yeah. differences I, I, I I, I see, you know, we, you can do a lot, and, and the tool clearly lets you do a lot. Um, but we used to do, I like said, we used we used to create training programs that lasted a week or three weeks, yeah. and then we had e-learning where we had to create modules that would be no longer than forty-five minutes. And now we're being told we can't do stuff that takes more than five minutes. <laughs> um, and I think we're moving from from learning to performance support yep. um, and the tool sets have to to allow us to do that. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that I had done was, was hide that quiz and to go along with what you said, to, to do it using your approach, you could hide a content page yeah. and, and make the quiz appear and then you can also uh, include a button um, after the quiz if you want them to go to the content page or not. So you have the option to hide the content so they don't have to deal with it, like you said. Okay, thank you, thank you, team. Go, Joseph. Right, you are up. I've been sitting with Doreen and Elsie. Elsie, and we spoke about the challenges of HR managers, and particularly with onboarding. Elsie works in a company with 9,000 employees, and obviously that's challenging for new hire orientations to get them all in one place or push out information through email to them that is pertinent to them starting their new careers in a 
organization and, and wouldn't it be great to have a mobile device, a mobile platform that can hold all that orientation material as an information hub and people could access it from anywhere, anytime. And uh, what we did in our little group session here is we, um, we did something you can see on your own phone by texting in right now, actually. You're already on short code 56512, probably. And if you just type in HR now, as the secondary keyword that we chose for our group, you can see a particular category that we built in that mobile website. I have built a shell, but the last category you can see once you click so on the link. So that you just you reply to one of those texts with the word HR and you'll get what we just talked about. And when you do, whoever gets the first, read out what you get. Welcome. Registration, a message from your CEO. How to find this. Right. And if you look at the last category that says training programs, from the main menu. That's the category we built together in our group. I had built the first categories in advance, but the last one we just built together in the group. And the communication has the name. Yes, exactly. Communication skills. And we picked listening skills as the one skill that we wanted to um, have people more information through the mobile device. and. We started out by um, using the text box and put the header in there, and then we chose uh, an image, I believe, and then we picked a video that we plugged off of YouTube and plugged it in there, and then we did a little quiz on listening skills. So that's what we've just built in our group to demonstrate how easy it is to make the assessments that um, Jim also had been showing his group, because that's obviously the quizzing and testing is a, a big interactive component of a mobile website. It gets people engaged. That's what we've done. Okay, Megan, you're up. So my group really just worked on, we texted in as well, we texted into a personal group that I had created for my team. And so what we really demonstrated was the ability to have segmented learning. So you have a group, you have a big group. We all texted in ASTD. We could send a text message to all of you right now if we wanted to. But anyone who texted in to train with me, we were able to explore how you can send out that type of message. So can we do it? Um, absolutely. If you want to go ahead and text and train, you'll get a cute little message that I sent. Go ahead and do that. What's the keyword? What are we training? Train. Train. 56512. Five, Five, six, five, one, two. Or just go to the text that you've already got. Mm -hmm. Just train. And so now, anyone, I could send everyone who texts in to train a message that would be separate, but if you didn't, you wouldn't receive a message. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we did review in our group was also how that's possible on mobile websites. How we have different categories and different pages that you could assign to certain people once they've already been included into a category, uh, or sorry, a group on your login. So uh, there is a way that we can hide certain types of information <laughs> from different levels of learners if you'd like to do so. Um, other than that, we kind of just reviewed HTML5 and different types of uses for training. So, so I've got a question. You said something that indicated there's different groups. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that if people from two or three different groups typed in the word train, they would get different messages? Uh, well, yes, essentially. So say, uh, I didn't text into HR for UTA, but I texted into train for me, but maybe Dave didn't text into HR or train. So if we, UTA and I sent messages, Dave wouldn't get it. So yes, it is possible for everyone to sign up for different types of categories and get different types of messages um, every day. And different access to different content. Right, absolutely. So as a, as a as a user, I'm now I'm now in HR and train, so as well as the, the general one. Mm -hmm. So I'll be getting anything that you send, that each of you send out. Right, and even when you go to the HR section, uh, Megan could have restricted you from seeing certain pages on the mobile website. Right. Should she have to do based based on what I'd opted into, or based on on. Mm -hmm. 
total of uh, uh, probably when when you would when when your name would have been uploaded into the system to give you permission in the first place to enter in, you could have had permission to look at everything or just certain certain categories. Okay, Jason. Yes. Final team <laughs> sales. Oh my gosh! I don't know what we're talking about. Uh, my group was, was it sales guys? Yes. Sales. I think it was. And we talked about a lot of things, basically tips and alerts and immediate learning. Um, and that's, you know, on time content, anything that needs to be done right away. And we actually built something. Um, but has anybody ever been the victim of the mobile phone march? And this is the mobile phone march. I'm, I'm guilty of it myself. It's this right here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Salespeople are really weird, if you guys can't tell when I'm one of them. But we actually are glued to our phones when information is given to us. So we actually showed things like price alerts, uh, different things that change as far as content. Anything that was sales focused, we talked about. And we showed how it can be distributed either by text message or actually on a mobile website. So if you guys want to, not you guys because you've done it, and I got your answer, I'll give it to you in a second. If you guys want to text in the word sales, mm -hmm you will see some of the things that we've done from a website that we completed. Um, so it's really basically what I always tell people is you have to use both hand in hand text messaging and mobile websites for people such as myself, which one message is not going to do it. You got to reinforce it. And Jim is actually, I mean, he talked about that earlier. It's constant touches. It's reinforcing. You got to let me know that one thing has changed. Then you got to let me know it's changed again. You got to keep reinforcing that information. So for salespeople, that's what we talked about just a few minutes ago. If you guys, if anyone get a text, if you did not mess it up, what does it say? Uh, it How took me to the sun. That's right. How it's done. It's such a, so, it's such a sales tag. <laughs> <laughs> I just changed it. It said something else for you guys. I mean. But anyway, that's what we discussed, and that is the website that we, that we looked at the last few minutes. Okay, so one minute wrap up. So the, the key takeaway points, what are they? And our team can't talk. Alan, we'll start with you. What are the five takeaways from our discussion? Um, I would say uh, performance support. Okay. It's, it's clearly, uh, uh, from, it's about horses for courses. Mobile is, is great for performance support, um, and the world of workplace learning and performance is going to require more of that and less in the way of long training courses. Yeah. Okay, another takeaway. Yeah. It integrates across all the platforms. Yeah, and you really have to do that. You just don't want to have a, a mobile thing for droids or for iPhones because people just want, want to use whatever they want to use. Uh, a third is it's not particularly good at everything. So the idea of taking an hour long e-learning course and making it, that, that was kind of when, when I started this five years ago, I thought it was going to be e-learning, mobile learning, right. and learning. You know, I would say out of our 200 clients, maybe 75% are not really using it for true mobile learning. And two or three years ago, there was a huge resistance on the part of trainers to go down that path. Now people are saying, you know what, I got, I, I don't, I don't know whether that's right or wrong, but I have to shorten it up and I have to go down this path. But it's not appropriate, and mobile is not appropriate for every single situation, clearly. For a lot of content, it's not appropriate. But it is this just-in-time, 24-hour access when I want it. And I mentioned to somebody here that, uh, maybe it was you, that if it's on a phone, it seems like it's more fun. Now that's it's going to probably end eventually, but right now, if I can take a survey or I can read that or watch that video in only three minutes, I kind of think it's okay, I'll do it. And if I don't have to do it in front of the computer terminal, it's okay. So you'll get, at least now, you'll get a lot more people using it. Yes? Um, at the last ASTD conference, there was a lot of discussion about millennials and how you teach and train and communicate with millennials, and this seems to be right along that mm -hmm. same. Smaller chunks, uh, yeah. visually oriented graphics, just in time. How much uh, <laughs> 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 I see the zip-like in Put the camera on her in the back. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you think that, that generational difference is fueling what your 
doing and Huge. you know I'm I'm biased. Uh, I'm not a millennial like some of our team here, so I learned the old-fashioned way. However, actually, truly, yeah, that's right. But truly, we are very ADD oriented now, and maybe we always have been. It's just now it's coming out in the form of our phone. So really, today's generation may not be any intrinsically any different than we were 40 years or so ago. But um, so I think all of us that are over 50, we're, we're multitasking. You know, we're, we're watching TV. You would never just watch TV without your laptop or your phone right. or something that's yeah. going on, even if you're yeah. mm -hmm. you know, over Have you ever seen the movie, the animated movie called Up? Yes. Yeah. The, the dog that's trying to, you know, capture the big bird and the squirrel runs by and he's distracted. <laughs> right. Squirrel. Squirrel. And now it's just that. Yeah. yeah. Squirrel. Yeah, so I think uh, it's not as you know, but prevalent with the at older the same generation. Time, they don't have the patience to right. pay attention to something they're not going to be able to use right. in no. 10 minutes. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, it's yeah. that yeah. just in time thing, I think, yeah. that is really, really yeah. big. Yeah. 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 yeah, if you're, if you're really just, looking at some serious concept building, yeah. um, then naturally, you know, like they've said, it's maybe not always appropriate for every environment, and that's where. You know, even just a traditional classroom and some other interaction with e-learning is going to be more applicable. But mm -hmm. like Ellen mentioned, you know, the performance support and and some other things along those lines, it really comes into play and lends itself well to, um, to handling some. I'm some getting ready to go into a difficult meeting, and I remember there were three significant things I had to think about when I talked to a difficult person. What are they? Pop it up. You know, that kind of reinforcement, mm -hmm. I think, That's this right. is That's so true. ideal for. Or I think the office, uh, you know, we have some uh, software companies, um, their salespeople. In fact, um, Uta has a client, a big bank in Germany, and their salespeople, before they go into a meeting, or even if they're in a meeting, they get asked for a form or a price or the mortgage rates or whatever. Oh, yeah. So they pull out their phone or their tablet and they go find it and they pull it up. And if it's a form, they can email it right to you and you can print it in the office or I could look at that price sheet. Mm -hmm. We um, uh, just signed the big manufacturer of uh, cosmetics in uh, Dallas, and they're going to put QR codes on all 200 pieces of equipment in their factory so that when the new guy comes and he needs to know how to change the filter, they, See, they did an right. iPhone See, video yeah. of the old guy showing how to do that. So you scan it with your, your phone or your tablet, they're going to provide tablets, and there is an instructional video on how to do that. Yeah. It's not really right. training, but it's sure to be very This just-in-time uh, buzzword. I can extend it to a trifecta because I heard that and it sticks with me. It's just in time, just enough, and just for me. Oh. Yeah. So it's short yeah, right. and personal and just in time when I need it. Right. So yeah. just in time, just enough, just for me. And on that note, thank you for having us come out tonight. We've got brochures and business cards if you want to pick them up. Hey, Jim, could you put them by the front? So yeah. Those cards in our catalog. Yeah. And thank you, everybody. Thank you. Alan, Sorry, did you get back to the front? You're good. I thought I could get out of the way. So, um, we will be sending off this video to all of you. Uh, uh, quick assessment of how to do the work. I really what you think of this venue, um, how easy or difficult it was you get here, things like that. We are we are venue hunting. Uh, all of our workshops for the next two pro, pro, uh, our next two months will be uh, back at our San Francisco State um, location um, of Market Street. we after that we're we're venue hunting again. So, is that not available for the future? No. Oh. It, we found that out uh, last Sunday. Uh, so, yeah. So, if, if you know of a great venue for uh, for workshops and, um, uh, and evening programs, uh, we would be really interested to hear that from you. Is, um, is it okay to be in Oakland, or does it have to be in San Francisco? It should really be bar accessible for a yeah. lot of people. So, uh, Oh, if it's wherever it is, we want it to be as accessible as possible to as many people in the Bay Area as possible. Yeah. So that 
kind of says it's got to be close to a bar stop. Um, we're looking. I, mean, I see we've seen a couple of options, <laughs> which are a little bit more like <laughs> west of the city, but that makes them pretty much part inaccessible, which just makes them not available. So, so I'd be interested to hear, get your feedback uh, either on the on the uh, feedback form that we sent, or um, just to grab me in a minute when you see me. Or send, it, send me an email, programs at ASCD.org. Um, thank you all for coming. I hope to see you all um, in August at the Tom Coleman events, uh, in uh, September at the Joe Gancy events, and then we'll um, wait to hear what we're going to be doing. We'll be shortly be telling you what the rest of the year and, and next year is all going to be about. So thank you very much for your time. Once again, thanks to Dave and the team. Thank you very much.